What are they called? The Blooms? <laughs> no, that's Pirate Treasure, right? The, the Looney and Toonies or something, or Dooneys, the Bloonies, your currency. It's not the Bloons. <laughs> It's Loonies and Toonies. Loonies and Toonies. Is that where Looney Tunes is based? Like, is that where they got the things? People don't know this, but on the lo- on the Looney is Porky Pig, and on the Toonie is Bugs Bunny. People you don't know are that. Lie. Well, <laughs> you're gonna have to well, find out. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know, right? Because I don't have Loonies or the Bloomies. What? You haven't seen Donnie Darko? I haven't. I haven't. We always do this. We do. Who is that voice? Like, who are we impersonating specifically? Just people. There's, I just spat all over the place. Just people, like, yes. <laughs> much like, much like Exorcist, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it looks like the Predator. This is a predator, like like this type of thing. Why is it? Yeah. So th- that was a thing behind that. So when they go into production of the Predator movie, they had another guy that was designing it, mm-hmm. and it looked like a like a weird like bug looking thing, and it wasn't yeah. looking good, and it just wasn't prosthetics. Like they actually started building the costume, and they just didn't like the way that it looked. So the director decided he hired somebody else like last minute to fly them out there and hurry up and try to make the new Predator costume. So as he was on an airplane, if I'm not mistaken, he was on an airplane flying out there and he was talking to, I don't remember, it was like, um, I don't remember who the filmmaker was. It was somebody big. And the guy was like, you know what you haven't seen yet? You haven't seen, like you talked about that mouthpiece. Like we haven't seen a monster with that. And the guy ended up taking that. And now that's Predator signature, you know, look. So the guy just went like this. No, no, we haven't seen this. Like, why (laughs) haven't we seen this? Why haven't we Can seen this that? Be something? But, but what he did know is that he wasn't referencing a, a a a monster. He was just he was just actually doing very racist comments. You know that was in sign language. Oh, <laughs> hey, does this mean something? We Let us flag. know, people who watch this. Who <laughs> what? you haven't what? seen <laughs> you haven't seen Donnie Darko? Wow! And then they shake when he got shake. Really They're trembling. <laughs> They tremble when he gets super excited, you know, not to be confused with nipples or anything like that. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Hey, listeners, if any of you guys have trembling nipples, please let us know. That way we know that you guys exist in this world. There's like a secret organization, like an underground pack of them. or like, the world can't let us know that we exist. We're hidden from the world. They can't let us know there's vibrating nipples. <laughs> not like mole people they're just like nipple people and they have like yeah. part of like the wiggle nipple society <laughs> <laughs> they got t-shirts though if you join the club you got t-shirts and a <laughs> and a complimentary mug coffee mug but you got to pay like 300 dollars for like the annual membership kind of a lot of money just to meet up at a freaking church yeah and daniel knows this because clearly he has <laughs> nipples that do this <laughs> the shirts that they sell have the nipples cut out <laughs> because they're just like owning it they're like look and they get excited and just like <laughs> because you have to know if they're a fellow person or they're an impersonator you know it's very easy to say your nipples gyrate it's another one to show it there's so many people out there like parading <laughs> around as nipple quivers <laughs> just, they just lie about it we need proof well we're way off top uh, okay i was <laughs> This just became a, a side quest episode. <laughs> From movies to video games, welcome back to Replays It All. Today's episode is late to the game with my co-host, Zaniel. Zaniel, <laughs> Hey, I haven't heard that one yet. Where my co-host, Zaniel, forces me to watch popular movies I embarrassingly haven't seen. Forces me. Like, just like, watch this movie, ditch this. <laughs> <laughs> say uncle say uncle why are you hitting yourself why are you hitting yourself why are you hitting yourself as she's watching the movies it was either that or she's gonna go back to watching the Blair Witch again and we didn't want that to happen so let's have her watch some movie that she should have already seen especially really good ones where people are like ah what you haven't seen that movie we're slowly removing how many times people say you haven't seen that movie you haven't seen that movie we're slowly dwindling that down so I present to you a series of questions that you have to answer prior to watching the movies. And we get to see how right or wrong you are after you watch the movies. And we're going to see if you're going to rage quit it 
or play it back. But if you've already seen the movie, then you get to Uno Reverso card me, and I got to watch something that you want to watch. Okay. So this okay. movie, I'm pretty sure you've heard of it, but you've never seen it. Desperado. I've never seen it. Yes. All right. Let's see how much you know. Again, I'm sure you've seen pictures. I'm sure you've seen things yeah. like it. So you probably yes. know who's in it, but I don't think you know anything yes. about the movie. No. Pop quiz, hot shot. Whoa. <laughs> I saw you laugh before you said pop quiz, hot shot. And I'm like, he's going to do it. Jesus, so that- he's... <laughs> I laugh at my own jokes too many, far too many times. Okay. What is the movie about? The movie is about a guy who, uh, what is, I don't even know what a desperado means, Um, but he is one. <laughs> What do they do? Are they like Desperado? I, don't, I know that this, song. <laughs> I know the song. So, so I know it's. Is a, that part of the soundtrack? Maybe? No. No, it's not. No. The soundtrack's going to be more spicy. I think it's. I don't know what Desperado is. I'm guessing it's about a guy on the run or he. I know he's violent, but he's good because he gets the girl. Okay, so I don't know. Desperado is about a dude, and he's on the run for something that he didn't do, and the, but like they're trying to ca- trying to get him, but he's he didn't do it. That's that's it. That's a synopsis. That's <laughs> very simple. So so he's on the run for something he never did. Uh, a, a murder. Okay, a murder. So the girl that he gets is that the one that he murdered, or does he meet her on the way no. and they think he murdered, like a mailman. No, so basically he meets her when she's when he's on the run, and then she mm. helps him because she falls in love with him. Like they fall in love. Actually, I mean, like come on, they're gonna yeah. they're gonna fall in love, and like this. Oh, yeah. um, he's like kind of like he's like a bad guy, but not a bad guy because he has a heart of mm. gold, and he's but he like needs her help, and she wants to help him because she wants to protect him and take care of him. Because I mean, come on, and then and but then he's kind of dangerous a little bit. Like he has a background, but he didn't kill this person, and then she likes that because he can also protect her. So they have this like mutual protection for one another, and it's just mm-hmm. you know that's that's how it goes. It yeah. <laughs> sounds pretty good. Um, who, do you know who's in it? Yeah. Who? Antonio Banderas and Salma Hayek. There you go. Okay. The protagonist is a former what? He used to be. A, he used to be some sort of like a con man. He did. Like he. He's not. He has a shady past. Okay. But mm. he didn't like do like the bad things. Like he never like got his hands dirty with like murder or anything like that. And he's and he saw like how bad it was. And now he's on the run because oh 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 wait wait. <laughs> he just steals stamps. That's what he used yeah, to do. That's it. <laughs> yeah, and Salma Hayek loves that because, like, what a bad boy. Um, mm-hmm. so no, because he used to be um he used to be part of this like corrupt like organization, and he's like a con man. But then he saw a murder, and there, and then he's like, I don't want to be this anymore, and he's trying to get out of it. So then they, what they're doing is framing him for the murder, so that. They don't get arrested, and then they, he get arrested, and he won't tell the cops, and the cops won't believe him. So it's like this big thing, man. Where does the movie take place? Mexico. Mm, stereotypical. I like it. <laughs> well, I'm just imagining because I've seen like a part of like, yeah, yeah, the yeah. movie, and the, so I'm trying to the, the landscape. Mm-hmm. Could yeah, be Santa I mean, Fe, New Mexico. Could sure, be Arizona. I mean, I don't know much about Texas. America, so I so I'm just like, sure. Do they have sand? Are they hot? I guess so. <laughs> it's Mexico. The character Buscemi strolls into a bar and tells a story about what? Buscemi goes and tells a story about this guy who's like the desperado. And Buscemi used to be friends with him. And then they were walking through the desert one day and Buscemi got bit by a rattlesnake and the venom went inside him. So what did Desperado, the Desperado guy do? I don't even know his real name. Sucked it he, out. Yes. He sucked <laughs> it out. He sucked That's it out. That's a nice out. guy. Just like, he took it. It's like, just like spat it out. And it's just like, whoa. And so everybody is like, wow, this guy's, this guy's legit man he's he's dangerous but he's also helpful because he saved mm-hmm. this guy's life but he's also dangerous like he sucked the venom out of a leg what did he do did he swallow the poison or did he spit it out and like he sp- spit on a bug he spat it out and it was very poetic because he stomped on the st- on the snake's head and killed it with snakeskin boots on mm, that's so pretty cool like, killed him with his own cousin 
I know. I was gonna say, see, this this, this was your mama. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's even better. This is your mama. Yeah. Okay. When the protagonist calls two of his friends for help, they have unique equipment. What are they? I'm gonna say what I think it might be: guns in guitar cases. That's the equipment that I'm thinking they're bringing, and they're getting all the getting the guns in, and it looks like okay. guitar. Okay, I, I'll give you a hint then. No. So, <laughs> one of them, the the main guy, has guns in a guitar. The other two have something different. Oh. So what are the other two? They are going to have. Oh my god. Kittens. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm thinking things, but it's like kind of discriminatory. But I'm trying to think like that. Were you gonna I'm say beans? Think... Well, I was gonna chips say and weapon. salsa. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd be Maracas? good. That would distract me. That would distract me. I'd be like, oh, yo, yeah, you got nachos? Let's go. Just kill me. Um, <laughs> no, I was gonna say a normal weapon where they were hiding it. <laughs> What's stereotypical because i'm trying to corporate like why are they bringing it a guitar in well maybe they're a mariachi band they're pretending to be one and, and they got some burros <laughs> and they're so they... weapons in there okay so the special equipment is sombrero special specialty crafted sombreros that are hiding bombs or bullets or something yeah, now I'm just picturing something really cool. Like the sombreros themselves were weapons and they had like these really you can't tell looking at them, but cuz like it looks like a nice like silverish edge on the on the sombrero, mm -hmm. but really it's like a sharp like weapon Razor. and they're going to yeah, Throw and they're going to chop heads off. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Read my mind, man. <laughs> like, there you go. Okay. They just throw it and boom, it sticks to the wall and they have to go and rip it out or is it work like a boomerang where they throw it and it comes back to them? No, it sticks in a wall because that would be that would be a really good uh thing to like show in like a scene where he like whips it and then it goes through the head and it gets like stuck in the wood in the wall. That would look cool. <laughs> and the head's still just sitting there on the sombrero. No, the head's on the guy still, and then it falls off. And oh, looks... oh snap! Whoa! <laughs> okay. Whoa! 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 <laughs> okay. There's a character named Pickup Guy who explains how he made money pissing in a bar. How did he do that? What they do is they have this game at this bar where they give they give you as many tequila shots as you can handle, and they'll be mm. free. They'll be free if they have this bucket, they have this metal bucket that's a little bit of far away. And they're like, if you can hold in your pee for a really long time, take all the tequila shots, and you can pee like a trajectory into this buck into this bucket you, but the thing is you got to do that as you're taking a tequila shot and while you're peeing this is this is the kicker okay this, a lot of people don't know this this is the <laughs> kicker <laughs> while the, while you're peeing you got to do like the whole like you know like the salt take the shot bite the lime and then you have to in that in that one shot there's the worm in it so you got to mm. it's like you're draining your worm by taking the worm and you got to and you're distracted, but you got to get it all in the bucket, man. And then everything's for free. And then this, what a, what a glorified, like glorified story. Like what, isn't there that like. So he has to do it without any hands then essentially. I don't know like, how male anatomy works when they're peeing, but I'm imagining that the force is so strong because he has to pee with one hand. No. You, you could pee without hands, but how good is his aim? If it's all the way to the other side yeah. of the room. That's the question. I think he can use a hand, one I mean, hand, because then the guy's name is pickup guy, right? Maybe he picks up a person, you know, flirts with a girl. Maybe she helps him assist him in some form. Yeah, I mean, I, I was imagining assisting him like she's the one holding the shot while he likes the salt and gives him the shot, gives him the lime. She's passing him all the stuff. But I guess she can that. assist him in other ways, too. Yeah, we'll go with the PG yeah. version. <laughs> yeah, let's go with the PG version. OK, yeah. what does the protagonist help the neighborhood kid with? So the neighborhood kid, the Selma Hayek's son, she's a single mom. Okay. Mm. And this is this, okay. So he's just getting better to her by the minute. All right. Because he um, is riding his bike and then he falls off his bike and scrapes his knee. And then he just comes over and he sucks the blood off the knee and spits it. In the <laughs> Damn. He's got to be careful for AIDS. He's just going around <laughs> sucking everybody's blood all over the place. Careful now. now. Okay. He didn't do that, but he did help him get back up and he like help him. And he was like, 
uh, telling him a story while he kind of like made him feel better. And then the, then she, then Selma sees him being so uh, like kind to her son and like calm and he's so good at calming him down. But the kid's usually not calm because he doesn't have a dad and he's like, you know, a little bit distraught with it. And this guy comes in like immediately a father figure and she's like, done, lock that down. Especially if it's Antonio Banderas. Then, there you go. Done, yeah. son. Who does Danny Trejo play in this movie? Uh, he plays the the pickup guy. He plays the guy who pees mm, in the bucket. Naturally, because that's what he does, right? You see Danny Trejo, you automatically think sexuality. Just So he clearly picks girls up. Well, somehow when he's put in movies, that somehow he's like a ladies man sometimes. Somehow. So I guess, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. That's a part of it. I, I Somehow. <laughs> Good call. What business does Carol does Carolina own? She owns an auto body shop, which makes her really hot to Antonio Banderas because she's she's mm. feminine, obviously. Like, look at her. But then she has like this like like badass, like almost like tomboy side to her where she's like she can get down and dirty and like fix a car. And that is going to come in handy later on in the story because she's going to have to fix up something and then they're going to have to go. And that's her getaway car. Fast and the Furious style. She builds a souped up Fast and the Furious car. What's harder than a girl doing an oil change? A man pissing in a bucket? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So the business that Carolina owns, what mm -hmm. is it a cover for? Uh-oh. Is Carolina bad? I don't want to think that she's doing something shady, but maybe she's forced into doing something shady because her uncles own the car shop first. And she has to work there. So they all mm. own it together. But then um, he's they're basically forcing her into this life of crime. So I'm just going to say drugs. Sure. Why not? Like, we're in Mexico, right? I, like, is there drugs? <laughs> I mean, is that a cartel shit? I don't know. Yeah. Drugs. Yes. Okay. Sure. How are the protagonists and the antagonists linked? They're brothers. Stereotypical, I see. Every Mexican is, is related. No, I just thought it'd make a good story. All right. Okay. okay, well, I was gonna say I was gonna say because this is why he sympathizes with uh, Selma Hayek's son is because they also had a single mom. Is that a stereotype too? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, they're brothers, and then they work together with like the bad guys who ended up doing like the the killing. His brother is the one who did the killing. Oh. And Antonio Madera saw, and then he's like, "I want out," but the brother's like, "No." And this is the ultimate betrayal where he's like. Tr like trying to give um uh Antonio Maderas up Desperado. Mm, so he's trying to sell him out. Ultimate. So he's yes. trying to sell him out to the to the ma to the mafia or the cartel or to the cops. Yes. In Mexico they're the same. Either. Yeah. <laughs> Cartel's got the got the police bought up, so that's fine. Give him to the cartel and they're gonna kill him. Give him to the cops and he'll just be in jail forever. So or kill him. I don't know how it works in Mexico. They have death penalty or whatever. I also just noticed right now that we're both just swinging in our chairs. Oh, we are. I realized that a couple of questions ago. I just, I just realized it right now. It's like, hey, we've been swinging in our chairs. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> when you sit there and do the show long enough, you start getting in the same cycle. Are you ovulating too? <laughs> yes. So you're ready to slap on our sombreros and uh, kick some butt? Let's get into it. Let's watch this show. I just watched the movie, but before I came back to do this, I had to go get my hair done. You know, I just thought like Desperado <laughs> felt like I needed teal hair. You know, I was like, not oh, I'm not feeling song. this blonde anymore. Or sing the, the two <laughs> notes. Yeah. When it was just like Desperado. I don't even know. Yeah. Is that's that it? it? Elaine. That's what Elaine sings. I've never actually heard the song. So sure. And it's funny that we both only know that song because of Seinfeld. Yeah. So did you ever, when you were watching the movie at any point, did you think of that part, the song or no? Or are you so captivated by the explosions? I'll let you know if I was captivated. <laughs> I'll save cool. that for later. See how I actually felt about this movie. We'll find out. All right. So what is the movie about? The movie is about uh, a musician who mm -hmm. had his, his, um, I don't actually know why they killed his wife. Do they ever explain? That's in the first movie, El Mariachi. Oh, oh, there's a first movie. There's a first oh. movie. So here's the difference, though. So Robert Rodriguez that directed this one did El Mariachi. 
about the mm-hmm. same character, but it's played by a different actor, and, and the actor oh. was played by one of the friends that had the okay machine gun case. Okay, okay so, so it was a I lower budget. It, or... it was his first project. It was his first movie oh. that he did. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know mm-hmm. that. I was just like, why aren't they explaining why his wife died? But anyway, he's a musician, and his wife got murdered. Um, and then they shot his hand. The bad guy shot. Uh, his hand so he can't really play the guitar anymore and now he's like out for vengeance to kill all the people who are there who were witnessing his wife's death all the people who are tied together and it's, it's all like get, gets stuck into like rug stuff too that's a revenge story so if i was going to tell you oh you know so typical drug cartel check violence check revenge story check mariachi band check these are all things that i guess when I was guessing stuff and you kept calling me like racist and saying mm-hmm. I was saying being stereotypical that. because you Saying totally yes. are, but it's stereotypical for a reason. I didn't call you right. Did I call you racist? I use the term or did I say stereotypical? Stereotype was the word. You weren't yeah. so like, huh. yes, it, hey, he's call me. You said, yeah. Stereotype. But we always say it's a stereotype because usually it's rooted in truth. <laughs> so that's why they're stereotypes because usually not every single person, but yeah, in this case, it was absolutely correct. Yeah, it's a movie, so I thought it would be more like on the stereotype side. I don't know. They usually glor- like, not glorify, embellish things. So I was right. So this is actually a trilogy. So there's oh. El Mariachi was the first one. The one after this is Once Upon a Time in Mexico. That one has Johnny Depp in it. It has oh. Mickey Rourke in it. That was like his first Whoa. comeback project before he did The Wrestler. So this one's like way more as Eva Mendez in it. So this one has a lot more higher budget and and more a-list actors that were in this so yep that's what the movie's about the protagonist is a former what musician correct yeah specifically is it a mariachi band yep or no? okay I or mariachi he wasn't technically mariachi. a band he's by himself he was in a band well yeah he had a band <laughs> he had a band with him in the beginning yeah but he's not a former mariachi band he's a former mariachi player I thought you said what kind of back. Okay, whatever. You're no, just going to keep said, saying I'm being serious. The protagonist also- is a former. He's a former what? Mariachi player. Okay, I didn't know there could be like just like a singular mariachi player. I thought he had to be a band. Okay. <laughs> well, if I say a football player, right? Oh, what is he? Oh, he's a football team. No, he's a football player. <laughs> That's a little bit different. I'm okay. totally <laughs> kidding. Where does the movie take place? It's Mexico, right? <laughs> yes, it does. Okay. Actually, uh, it's El Salvador. No, I'm kidding. It's Mexico. <laughs> Scared you for a little bit because you're like, I don't know the difference. And then that's when I say, now you're being racist. <laughs> and they're kidding. talking about like Colombians in the movie. And I'm like, oh, Marie, this you, is- you have no you have no idea how much joy us minorities get to make fun of and prod white people for being racist, even when you guys aren't, because the whole time you guys were proud to be it, and now you guys are shameful of it. So now it gets a, it's just us just having fun at it. That's it. That's funny. I, I find joy in making fun of Americans who know absolutely nothing about Canada. So I feel it slightly in a, in a sense. That's like 98% of Americans. I know. We, we don't it's know like much about it. The, the character Buscemi strolls into a bar and tells a story about what? Do you just call him? To, what do they call him in it? The biggest Mexican. The big, he's biggest ever seen. Mexican. Yeah. Right. So, so you just tell the story about how he went into a bar and just like blew everybody away in this bar to like scare the people in this bar because this bar <laughs> knows where Ucho is. Yes. And when you say he blew them away, you meant with a gun. Mm. Yes. With, with a gun. It was, <laughs> oh God. He didn't I walk into gonna... a bar blowing men. He blew them away with a gun. Yeah. Yeah. He blew them away. I was going to go like in a really. It ain't Marie if she's only sticking it to PG at this point. I'm trying to keep at least PG-13. When the protagonist calls two of his friends for help, they have unique equipment. What are they? One has a guitar case, but it's actually a missile launcher. And the other one, oh, I love that so much. I, mm-hmm. I, in my notes, my note is, yes, a f- missile launcher. I was so excited. And the way he does it on it. the shoulder and when he fires it off, it's like, hell yeah. Oh. He didn't just launch it. it. He got in that position and did it. Mm. That was so cool. That was my favorite part of the movie. And also yeah. the other guy had like two guitar cases that were like machine guns. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yep. Mm-hmm. Those are pretty Love cool. It. Okay. Pretty cool. A character named Pickup Guy explains how he made money pissing in a bar. Mm-hmm. How did he do that? 
again, I was pretty close on this. I was pretty close. I was saying he's pissing far away on a bucket in a bucket and he had to like <laughs> so but instead he had a story about how he had to piss in a glass that was far away and when he was peeing he peed all over the bar and all over the bartender and all over everything and then in and then he actually bet these people playing pool more money that the bartender wouldn't get mad because it's a big long story anyway i was kind of right it's in a glass we peed all over the place and he had another bet with people playing pool that hit that not only was the bartender not going to get mad he was actually going to laugh right that he peed in it and he did so mm -hmm. smart play okay and um which was played by quentin tarantino yes his buddy what does the protagonist help the neighborhood kid with oh uh, play the guitar Mm -hmm. what does danny trejo play in this movie who does he play oh does he have a name yes in this? Oh, i don't know if they ever say um, it but it's in the credits oh oh okay well he but, he's this yeah. guy who has all these knives so is he called like knives is he called like navajas guy? navajas which means knives oh okay so my white <laughs> yeah. ass got, the, got it a little bit got okay. it okay yeah yeah, so he plays that, and he's doesn't say anything at all in the movie, and he's just throwing mm. these knives, and it was, it's pretty. And cool. he's a uh, bounty hunter. Bounty hunter, yeah, he's movie. a bounty hunter. Yep. Kind of much like Boba Fett. I was just saying the same thing. I was going to say the same thing. I, mm -hmm. I was. But, but you didn't. I I didn't. Seriously, so you have great me. gold comparison here, and you're you're just you're depriving your audience of of this. Well, I thought I I thought I let you do it you know give you some comedy for <laughs> once <laughs> well i'll just butcher it like i always do okay what business does carolina own a bookstore cafe that's right and mm -hmm. what is it a cover for i was right on this too uh drugs like it like like passing off drugs like and that's right i said you're stereotypical up. yeah and also <laughs> correct Again, yeah. stereotypes can be truth. And how are the protagonists and antagonists linked? Again, got it right. And again, probably stereotypical. They're brothers. <laughs> because she thinks we're all related. And guess what? We are. So funny little story. I don't know if I told this on the podcast yet, but one time when I was in high school, me and a couple of my Hispanic friends we were out mm -hmm. driving and we went like maybe two cities over. And it was like later at night and we saw somebody that was hosting like at an event hall some kind of party. So we all joked and said, hey, let's just park. Let's go in. Let's just eat some food. Guaranteed one of us knows somebody. We said that I said that as a joke. We walked in, grabbed food. They had some beer. So we grabbed some beers. <laughs> and sure enough, one of my friends, that was his cousin. They just got married. And so they just brought over and then <laughs> it's exactly what I said. So stereotypical for a reason, because it's true. Did he get mad and be like, why wasn't I invited? No, not at all. We just got there and we're like, hey. So he thought, oh, he must have heard from Thea. It's like, no. You didn't get mad that all. he wasn't invited and then pull out his guitar case full of guns from the trunk of your car? No, we left that in the trunk because we're also a group of Hispanics. So cops were absolutely looking out for a group of Hispanics that were in high school age. Okay. <laughs> Stereotypical. That's it. All right. So let's get into your notes. Marie's notes. Marie's notes. Desperado. Okay. There aren't many. Because I was really watching and I didn't have anything really to. <laughs> so when you're not watching, then you write more notes? No. When there's things that come up that are so ridiculous, like the room, I had to pause constantly to take notes. Okay. Like Good. constantly pausing to take notes. But this, I was just like in it, you know? So basically the, the beginning of the movie, I had no idea who made this movie at when I went into it. No idea. I didn't know. Okay. See, Buscemi walks in. First of all, I'm like, what? And then. And then it felt really fun. I was like, I wasn't expecting this movie to be fun. I wasn't expecting it. And then the opening scene and him playing with his mariachi band, um, he's playing. And then I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, this looks really Tarantino-ish. It's the way it was like all the shots. And then Robert Rodriguez comes on the screen. I'm like, that's why. <laughs> yep, from <laughs> Best Till Dawn. Yep. Got it. Yep. Yep. And then I was like, well, he's going to be in the movie. I was, so I was waiting the whole time when he was going to be in the movie. And then when he showed up, I was like, yeah. So that was my first note. I love the music so much. I love how it showed all the times to reload guns. I thought it was so 
funny because like they never show that in movies it's just like constant ammo i make comments sometimes and like people have infinite ammo just like legolas arrows like it's just constant ammo and it's just the amount of times that they had to reload and stop but oh shit and they're reload he's reloading they're reloading it's like, ah. <laughs> i thought it was so and you funny. see the click where they both got a gun in their face and a click, 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 and you see him grab it and they got to sit there and read <laughs> And then That's they're picking so up all the other guns and they're all mm. empty. Oh, I loved it. That was so funny. LOL at the Spurs in the sex scene. Oh my God. That sex scene was ridiculous. It was so funny. I was yeah. just like, these these angles are so funny. The shot's so funny. It was so like over the top. And this is spur of a boot on a body. And I'm like, okay. Almost, almost as good as the room. Almost with their sex scenes. I mean, if if the room had a spurred boot in it, I wouldn't be surprised. And then mm -hmm. yeah, and then the rest the rest of it, I have just to talk about the movie with whether or not I liked it or not. You want to hear some fun facts about Robert Rodriguez? Uh, yeah, he didn't tell me any fun facts about this movie yet. I know because I forgot to do that. <laughs> when I did the question, so my bad. So here's some fun facts about Robert Rodriguez. So okay. he self financed El Mariachi, and he was selling mm -hmm. his blood, and he was doing a lot of like uh, selling blood and doing a lot of things to get money. So the budget, I think, maybe I'm wrong, but I felt like it was like $10,000 or something like that. It was a very low budget when he did El Mariachi. That's why it's more of a lower budget. So it's the same character, but obviously he couldn't get Antonio Banderas to play mm -hmm. the, the role, which is why, of course, you know, he upgraded. But that's why, so that's kind of where he comes from. And then when he did the movie Sin City, mm -hmm. have you seen Sin City yet? Mm-hmm. So you know how he had Frank Miller that co-directed with him? Yeah. So the directors, the DGA was Directors Guild of America. They had strict rules about not having Frank Miller be listed as that. Like they 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 said, you can't do that. So Robert Rodriguez says, F you, I'm going to do it anyways because he created the comic books. Yeah. So he did it and he removed himself from the DGA. So as a result, that's why he created like Troublemaker Studios and all that stuff because he's making his movies outside of the industry. Oh, that's honorable AF. It is, but it also can hurt your career in the sense that you can't necessarily do certain IPs that maybe you wanted to do because they're part of the studio and unions and all that. So that's why it's honorable. That's why it's like exactly. you don't care about that. You are sticking to what you believe in. And that is you. Yeah, I like it. Love it. Exactly. Didn't True sell Latino out for right whatever. There. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. True Latino, right there. Hell yeah, that's what we do, Passion. baby. Passion. We fight for our rights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's it. You don't have any fun facts about um this movie? Uh, let's see. Raúl Julia. You know who that is? He played Gomez in the Adams Family movies. Oh, Gomez. That's, yeah, that's... sorry. I was, I was, yeah, Gomez. Sorry. Yes, Gomez. Yes. So yeah. Raúl Julia was cast as Bucho, but pulled out due to declining health. And sadly, he passed away two months after the release of this film. And what's more sad about it is that the last movie that he was in was a movie called Street Fighter, which was an adaptation of the video game, which is god awful. That is a disaster of a movie. The poor man tried his best and his health was declining while he was filming that. So it was very honorable with that performance. And I'm sad that that was the last movie he ended up doing. I always like them mm -hmm. to go out on a good note. Aww. Okay, so the cameo, the one that plays Scampa. He was played by the lead actor of El Mariachi. Okay. So it's good that Robert Rodriguez brought him back to at least be in the movie as like a shout out. Steve Buscemi's character's name is Buscemi because the part was written with him in mind, obviously. Okay, so the opening song that um, that Antonio Banderas plays was written by Los Lobos. And mm -hmm. they were in the audience during the bar scene in the opening credits. He's really singing in, in there, isn't he? Yeah. And when I looked up yeah. the soundtrack. He yeah. has music. Yeah. He's done real music yeah. that he's recorded and stuff. And I'm love pretty it. sure he was playing the guitar as well. That song's great, though, isn't it? That opening song. I love it. I, I recognize it, it right my... away. Yeah, yeah. That's from the movie. Jennifer Lopez tried out for the part of Carolina. I'm yeah. glad it went with Salma Hayek. <laughs> Me too. Oh, Salma Hayek. Yeah. Uh, oh, Antonio Banderas performed all of his own guitar work. Oh, okay. Director Robert Rodriguez said in his DVD commentary that the day that they shot Salma Hayek's love scene with Antonio <laughs> Banderas, the entire crew showed up to see it. He continues saying that apart from the actors, only the script and supervisor were actually in the room. But naturally, mm -hmm. they all wanted to see it. Yeah. So there you go. There's some fun facts about Desperado. Is it a movie that you're going to rage quit? 
or a movie that you're going to play back. I had so much fun watching this movie and I liked it even more that I wasn't expecting it to be fun like this. I don't know what I was expecting. I was, I guess I was expecting it to be like drier or something like that. I didn't realize who made, like it was Robert Rodriguez. So if I knew that, then I would have gone into it expecting more what I saw, but I was just like, this movie, it was so much freaking fun. I was entertained the entire way through. Um, yes. It had, yeah, it had like that Robert Rodriguez flair. It was like fun, but like really violent and then over the top, but then with artistic shots, like there's like that wide shot of him, of Antonio Banderas walking by that wall and the blood dragging by it. I was my favorite shot in the whole movie. I loved that. I loved that. And like the color contrast, like this yellow wall and he's walking in the blood. And I was like, Ooh, I love that shot so much. Um, and I'm not going to rage quit it. I don't know when I'm going to watch it again. But it's kind of like one of those movies where not like on the scale of like a Quintet, like a Kill Bill or something like that. But it's one of those movies where I think I'm going to be like, oh, you know what I feel like watching right now? Desperado. <laughs> and I will I will watch it again. I'm not going to rage quit it. I liked it and I thought it was super fun. That's how that that's how it was. It was it's a nice, fun 90s action, you know, with yeah. with more a little more meat and a little more artistic than just your traditional 90s shoot 'em up dumb kind of action that's how i felt with it you know so it's one that i go back to every so often i don't watch it all the time um but i do go back and i rewatch it a lot i was that was the first robert rodriguez movie i saw i was a fan of him ever since then so that's why when when i started getting the you know from dust till dawn and then of course sin city that's when i'm like yes so He's solid. So I, I I like that version of Robert Rodriguez. You know, I know he's done stuff like the Spy Kids movie and, you know, mm -hmm. Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Like, I'm not the target audience. I just I just don't like the way it aesthetically looks, you know, where it's so mm -hmm. jarring with the visual effects. I like when he goes down this route with it. So, yeah, it's fun. Mm -hmm. oh, that's fun but yeah you feel like the artistic value in it like the way certain things are shot the way like when he's walking through the hallway and the, the it's like tilted a little bit you know and i just and i don't know it it could be it's it's funny when something can be so kind of cheesy and like action-packed and like funny at times but then also you're like damn that was a that was a good shot what a good artistic choice you know so i like that contrast that he's able to pull that off like tarantino's able to pull it off he's able to pull it off too and i can see why they're buds Exactly. And that's why when you see Buscemi, it's like, oh, so it feels almost like him and Tarantino, at least during that era uh, when they were doing movies, because obviously they've kind of branched off since the 2000s and stuff. But that 90s era, it felt similar worlds, didn't it? It felt yes. almost like a shared universe because they were kind of reusing actors and things like that. Mm -hmm. and it was good. And like you even have um, Chich Marin that was in it as a bartender. Yes. <laughs> I was so happy to see him. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, yeah. Again, you know, you you see him again in From Dust Till Dawn where he plays like three, four different characters in that one. Yeah. You're right about it being in the same universe. I wonder if they kind of like were like in on that, you know, if they had like, if that was like something that they were in on, like making it feel like, because it does, it feels like those movies are in the same world. Yeah. Like and then they both have evolved to doing very different type projects later. So it's not like, Oh, well maybe one's copying the other, but then you saw mm -hmm. that they both did the grindhouse movies. So they mm -hmm. both packaged them together and they both did that kind of B level horror movies. So you could tell they're really close friends. So I can see that happening. So yes, probably. Right. I mean, it, it is. And the fact that Quentin wrote from dust till dawn and Robert Rodriguez directed it, that's already a shared, you know what I mean? Like that's literally a shared universe right there. Like both of their minds in this and this kind of falls in line with that reservoir dogs kind of falls in line with it a little bit. So you're learning now. Cause I remember when we first started doing this, you said, I don't know what your taste in like comedy and stuff is. Like, you're like, I don't know what mm -hmm. like your what kind of comedies you like, or I don't know. Are you learning more now about like what my taste and like movies are? Yes. But I also think you're also discovering a little more of your taste. So you didn't maybe realize that you liked, right? Because Desperado is mm -hmm. a movie you never would have watched on your own. I'm and assuming, I wasn't drawn to like, it. Why? I wasn't drawn to it. Yeah. Why? Right. You just see a picture of him walking with Salma Hayek with fire behind him. You could have been like, okay, if somebody's in the room with me and they're playing it, sure, I'll sit down and watch it. But if you're by yourself on a Saturday night, you're not going to sit there and watch it. Now you watch it and you're like, that actually wasn't bad. And it changes. The reason why I like doing this and even the show that we do is that it, it forces to change your palate. 
So mm. you're not sitting here watching horror or going back. So that's why even when we talked about it before, we say you like going back to the same movies. Then this is how this idea can, you know, was spawned. Where it's like you got to watch more movies. It's forcing you to watch them. So that way you can expand your palate. I know. I like being comfortable. I like watching my comfort movies a lot. But you know what? If I, I don't know why I didn't know Robert Rodriguez directed this movie and like wrote it. I, I didn't, I don't, I didn't know why I didn't know that. But I wonder if I did know it, if it would, I would have been more drawn to watch it. Maybe. But I'm glad I, I'm glad I didn't know because I was very yeah. pleasantly surprised when I saw those opening credits. And when the first scene happened, I was like, right when it's like, see, what Shami walks in, I'm like, okay, this is not anything that I thought it was going to be. And I was like, yes. I love it. I love it. And so thank you, Daniel, for expanding my palette and then cleansing my palette with things like heavyweights and, yeah, um, yes. and then re in introducing me to stuff. It sounds like a finale. This is not a finale. I'm just like, appreciate it. not a finale. So I liked it. There you go. Good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you for watching another episode of Marie Plays It All. This was Late to the Game with, I have no idea if you had a nickname, but you The mariachi are... himself, Daniel DeSangre. You can find more of our content on our YouTube channel, Not A Strong Start. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Not A Strong Start. You can listen to us anywhere you listen to your podcasts and you can like and share and subscribe and all that fun stuff. You can follow me on Instagram and Marie Plays It All. And you can follow the mariachi himself at King underscore Sangre. And you know what? If you guys follow him, if enough people follow him, if Daniel hits, I don't know how many people are following him right now, but if he hits a certain amount, he's going to post a song of him singing. Absolutely. And I'll be playing the guitar myself. Yes, he Danarachi. will. <laughs> Danarachi. <laughs> Danarachi. <laughs> Never stop playing. And what else? Never stop giving up playing your musical instruments, even if your hands get, hands get shot. Just exactly. never stop. Never Keep stop and never stop being your own inner mariachi, you know? Sometimes you just want to sing yourself in the car and just sing full blast, you know, blast of a shotgun. If you, if you just want to walk into a bar and start blowing all the guys with a shotgun, <laughs> always keep that energy, as Marie likes to say in the beginning, you know, earlier in the episode. Blow people away, guys. Let's do it. <laughs>